Hey, it's Joel Mark Witt and Antonia Dodge from Personality Hacker, along with our friend and guest, Beatrice Chestnut, who has developed a program with us called the Enneagram Roadmap here at Personality Hacker. Very excited about this program. We've been doing a short series, and we're this is our last video in that short series, uh, just talking through the program, talking through the Enneagram system in general. And in this video, we want to go into some of the personal growth applications of the Enneagram. Like, what does this mean for your life? If you're watching right now, you're excited about the program, you're interested in the program, you're like, I kind of want to invest in this. I want to invest in myself. What will it do for me? Might be a question you're asking. And let's go into that a little bit. Beatrice, do you have, you know, do you have a story maybe from yourself, something that was really impactful from learning the system, from something you applied in the system to your own life that really changed your growth path and changed how you show up to the world? Yes, um, many stories about that. I'll try to choose just one. Okay. Um, I think I think that Enneagram is an excellent guide for self-observation and self-exploration. Um, the way I often put it is, like when you say you want to work on yourself, you want to get better at something, you want to improve your life, you want to be happier, whatever it is, where do you start? You know, how do you know what to work on? How do you enter into a deeper understanding of yourself and your challenges and your strengths? Um, for me, when I learned the Enneagram, um, one of the things it highlighted for me is how disconnected I was from myself, right? So when I first learned it, that was my the first step on my path was I needed to get back in touch with my feelings, my needs. One time I was in a, a women's group. This was when I was had moved back to California after graduate school and um, I started working at a restaurant. Turned out some of my fellow waitresses were interested in personal growth. So we got we found a therapist uh, who did women's groups and we did women's groups. And one day um, the therapist turned to me and she said, um, so what do you need from the group today? And when she asked the question, you know, I thought, well, how do I answer that? And I kind of went inside and I got nothing. It was like there was nothing there. There was no clue, no answer to her question at all. Um, and it was almost like a real moment of existential anxiety. Um, and luckily, I had just gotten really deeply into the Enneagram right before that. And so what I realized with the help of the Enneagram is I was experiencing my disconnection to myself. I was re recognizing that I didn't know what I needed, that if you asked me, what do you need right now? I would have no clue. And if you don't know what you need, how can you, you know, move forward? How can you uh, make decisions and, and be connected to what your basic needs and wants are? And so that was a huge, um, uh, you know, eye-opening experience for me. And the Enneagram then, you know, helped me in many different ways, seeing why I wasn't connected, why I didn't know what I was feeling and needing. Um, basically, it was my attention was so focused on the outside, my survival, it felt like came from, if other people like me, I'm okay. If other people approve of me, I'm okay. So I was constantly sort of monitoring, reading the outside world and the people around me to figure out like, how are, how are you receiving me? How are you liking me? What do you think of me? And as a result, my attention was so focused on the outside that it wasn't focused on my internal experience at all. And so that was, again, the beginning of a journey of learning to get in touch with my feelings, uh, learning to get in touch with what I needed. I would have as a mantra, like, what do I need right now? Um, and, and so now, many years later, um, I often, I usually do know what I need and I very much often know what I'm feeling and I can be with my feelings and manage them and not be overwhelmed by them or not repress them. So I think first and foremost, the Enneagram is a really helpful guide or map uh, to help you see yourself more clearly. Um, it, help highlight, it helps highlight patterns that you may not be seeing, partly just because you've done them so much. You're so in them. They're like the air you breathe. You don't recognize what you're doing and how you're doing it. So I would say that's the first example is just uh, from myself and, and how much it helped me just start to see where I was, 
uh, what wasn't what I wasn't doing and how I wasn't connected to myself in a really basic way. Mm. Yeah, I think for myself, one of the major ahas that I had in my own personal development journey came through, even though, again, I'm a Myers-Briggs enthusiast and a lot of my growth and development <clears throat> excuse me, has been through an understanding of Myers-Briggs. But one of my, possibly the biggest aha I've ever had in development happened through an understanding of the Enneagram 3 sexual subtype. I have always, uh, well, when I was a teenager, I started struggling with body dysmorphic disorder. And it was a story that clung to me through my late teens, through my 20s, into my early 30s. And it was something that was such a massive deal for me. And I always felt so shallow. Like, like what is, why am I so fixated on how I look? Why is that such a big deal to me? Why do I have all this, like, all this stuff around it? And I can't, and, and, and I'm limiting my own options and my choices in life based on whether or not I think I'm attractive enough to enter a room or like, you know, like I, anytime something bad happened to me, I assumed it was because I wasn't good looking enough and that was the challenge. And it was, and if I reflected, I thought, man, that is a really shallow way to experience the world. And, but that doesn't mean that it let go of me. And right. when I discovered that Enneagram three sexual subtypes have a tendency to over rely on beauty and be fixated by beauty and be fixated by their attractiveness and their seductive quality. And then I patterned that I grew up in a family where um, my, my brother was old enough to feel like an adult to me. He was like nine years older than me, so he felt like an adult. And in retrospect, I realized that a lot of the things he said about me and himself and our family were just teenage angsty things to say. But when I was a little kid, I thought of him as an adult with adult opinions. And he would just off the cuff say these things like, oh yeah, we come from a really ugly family or we come from a really unattractive family. He would just make these like statements about how unattractive we were as a family. And that experience attached with the natural fixation fused together to create what I, the story was that I had this disorder and that I was never attractive enough. And when I realized that it's almost intrinsic wiring for three sexual subtypes to be very focused on beauty as almost like a calling card. And then this, the personal experience of being told by somebody I thought had an adult mind that reflected back because as a three, I'm always looking for outer world feedback to let me know what's going on in the right. world. I'm not really consulting myself. I'm consulting the the feedback of the image that I'm giving to the world. And so this right. feedback got fused in with the natural fixation and turned into this full blown disorder. And when wow. I when I put those connections together, I, I well, what was nice about it is like we mentioned in a previous video, once you have language around it, it's like you can sort of observe it from a little right. bit of a distance like it's exactly. not so cloying to you. you can just kind of go okay so this is what's going on now i have language for it now right. i recognize i'm kind of hardwired to think in this way to some extent and right. also combining it with my own personal experiences that somebody else that was a three sexual subtype may never have experienced they may have never right. had anybody insinuate that they came from an ugly family or whatever and dooming it um they might have gotten very positive experiences and so they would more have to get through this idea of being over reliant on their looks maybe that is the thing that they have to figure out but for me it was um, being over reliant on the story of my looks, but I think they're both kind of the same thing. It's like whatever, what is the story of your particular subtype and how is it manifesting in you, which will be different. Right. But as soon as I traced mine back, all of it made total sense, and I was like, okay, right. now I realize why the story exists, and now I realize that right. it it was kind of almost inevitable with all of those nodes in the system working that way. And so now all I have to do is I have to sort of fillet out. Okay, well he was a teenager; he didn't know what he was talking about. Uh, you know, like. I mean, he was just making observations probably more about himself than he was about me. And, right. and I absorbed it as a little kid going, oh, this must be how reality works. So what right. I need to do is I need to like let go of the, of the feedback of the image I'm projecting. I have to rely more on my take. As a three, I need right. to be more self-reliant on my opinion about myself and let right. go of all the narratives and stories that have been given to me through feedback of the world, that that's their experience and they're allowed to have it, but they're not necessarily like right. representatives of the universe coming and giving me this piece of empirical information. And so once right. I started letting go of that piece and started going, oh, so there must be something to this hardwired to look for beauty thing. 
Um, yes. and, and it's and it's an appreciation of beauty in the world, and it's an appreciation of the intimacy that happens when people are attracted to each other. So focus on the intimacy piece, not on the shallow piece. Like just kind of right. having language for all of this. Basically, I felt like I woke up for the first time. Like it was just like a right. okay, now I get what's going on. Oh, and it's so clear. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And I and I and there's so many dimensions to it because you know threes are chameleons and they identify with the what then what's going on in the environment and so to get a message from that you're in you're in an ugly family you know and it, it's it's so clear how that operates that you identified with that almost mm -hmm. or identified with it but the most important piece of your story I want to highlight is how you judged yourself for being superficial. Mm -hmm. I think oftentimes when we start observing ourselves, we see something about ourselves we don't like or we think is bad and we judge ourselves and it actually makes the whole project of self-development 10 times harder. Mm -hmm. And what I like about the Enneagram is it shows you, it highlights these patterns, you know, that you're focused on physical attractiveness because you needed to be. That was, that was a, some, that in, on some level, that was what you learned was kind of your survival strategy or your way of getting something that you needed you know and so it's about having compassion for what's going on beneath the this the need of the different types and finding that like telling your story in a whole different way from a level of compassion and understanding instead of judgment or like you're saying this sort of the, the ideas that get stuck in our head about mm. who we are well, um, and, yeah. and when you mentioned that uh, in a previous video that you had the, the when you read two, it had a component of manipulation and you said, "Ooh, I don't like that. That doesn't sound very good. But then you traced it back like I'm trying to get my need met and I'm maybe not as good at like directly yeah. addressing it. But that's really what it is, is about getting needs met. For right. me, the shallowness was actually I crave intimacy. I love intimate right. relationships. I love getting right. really deep down and like sharing the inner pieces of me and, and having somebody else share the inner pieces of them as well. And oftentimes we associate intimacy with like full blown attraction. Like we have to be super right. attracted to, we don't have to be, but right. attraction is a venue to intimacy. And so when I yes. was able to no longer conflate the two, when I was able to separate yes. them and go, you know, it's really, no, I mean, the, the, the beauty piece is like, it's just a kind of a part of the package, but really what's going on is my desire for intimacy and how do I meet that need? How do I make sure the intimacy, yes. and then as soon as I was able to do that and figure out how to create intimate relationships, and I did that through, you know, some work around being radically honest and, um, you know, making sure that I was representing myself in an accurate way, not in a way that would, you know, dance, be a chameleon to other people. Right. Which, by the way, is, is the high side of three, right? right? That's exactly the work of a three is radical honesty and recognizing that who you are is the most beautiful thing of all. Exactly. You know? And so then I was yeah. able to get to my end goal of intimacy and the rest of it just kind of like it wasn't necessary anymore. It just became sort of irrelevant. Yeah. And uh, I think beautiful. for me, having being a Myers-Briggs enthusiast and, and being somebody who really recommends going through like an under, a deep dive understanding of a Myers-Briggs type, I, I will fully acknowledge that it was actually the Enneagram that helped me let go of one of my biggest um, challenges. So I, I'm a, again, I'm an enthusiast for the, for the Enneagram system because I, I've experienced the power of the self-awareness that comes through this system. Yeah. And I also appreciate how open you are to the Enneagram, given that you're an expert in the Myers-Briggs. You know, I think some people get so focused on what they know really well and what they're really good at that they don't have a lot of openness to other ways and other paths. And so I really want to appreciate that about you. Thank you. We call ourselves tools agnostics. Like whatever tool yeah. works, that's the one that I like. Yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, it's great. So I want to highlight that, you know, it could be very easy to hear some of the stories that we're talking about in this video and say, okay, like you watching, you might be saying to yourself, okay, I see this is a, this is a healing tool. This is a tool to quote, fix your problems mm -hmm. or get over stuff. Uh, I think it's also a tool of inspiration mm -hmm. and permission for myself. Finding mm -hmm. out that I was a social six was very inspiring to me. It's very empowering because a lot of the things that I was gravitating toward or desiring in my life, for some reason, I had a lot of permission blocks around them. I was giving myself some resistances to that and realizing that this is part of my natural wiring in a positive way, in a powerful, proactive, permission-focused right. way, giving myself permission to go, oh, the things I'm desiring, that's actually part of how I'm wired. That's some of the things that I show up to the world the best at. And it's not right. always about the negative stuff. I think that could be very easy to take away. Mm. Uh, oftentimes yeah. in, the, in the language that's used around Enneagram, 
I think the impression could be that it's just a tool for healing or for fixing something, right? Or, or getting right. out of a bad situation or right. getting past There's your... There's something wrong with you. Exactly. Yeah. And I think it could yeah. really be a tool for inspiration and permission and like pushing you forward yeah. as well to give you a path, a, a chart yeah. of the exciting things that you're already naturally wired to do, mm -hmm. which I found really right. powerful from the system. So I think regardless if you're watching uh, from more of a, a personal growth and like a healing aspect or a personal growth from a where can I go next aspect, I think it has all of those elements in it. And I think in the program, Beatrice, you really do a good job of going through a lot of that. The, the, the challenges that come up by each of the subtypes, the 27 subtypes, but you also give a path of inspiration and permission for, mm -hmm. and here's what it looks right. like, a mature growth path of this type. So once you discover your type, you can get excited about all the potential to unlock in yourself, which gets me excited. Right, 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 right. Yeah, there's a little, it's so funny. It is a bit of a good news, bad news story <laughs> when you find your type. You know, there's a little bit of bad news of like, this is the ego game that I'm caught up in. This is how I get in my own way. Um, however, there's a lot of good news. You know, the good news is is that you know you it highlights your strengths and what you are doing really well and that what you could do more of or even more consciously. But it also highlights that you're not just your personality. You know, you're much more than that. You have got all this higher potential. All you know, you've got a bigger self that you may not be manifesting or even aware that is capable that is that is possible for you and that's why i tell the acorn story you know when when in the in the enneagram roadmap which is a little story about uh it's just a funny parable about how the acorn visits this acorn colony that live at the foot of this oak tree and basically brings the news like we're we're that we're the oak tree and they all think he's crazy and they're like well why do you do why why are we that? How do we? How would we become that oak tree? And he says, "Well, it has something to do with going into the ground and letting your shell crack open, you know." And so the idea is, it's it's a little bit painful to see yourself and be really honest with yourself. It's a little bit painful to focus on some of the the dark side or the shadow aspects, uh, but once you do. Um, and you allow yourself to really experience, have the experience of growing out of that, you know, the sky is the limit. You know, you really are able to be all of who you can be in a way that some people never dream is possible for them. So I love that you're bringing out the inspirational part to me, because for me, that's very much what it is. You know, I've grown so much with it. And I also like how you're both of you are really highlighting the subtype level. Right, that it wasn't. That's not just the type that gives you insight about yourself. The subtype gives you even more fine-tuned uh, information about how to use it. And for me, for instance, I, I as a psychotherapist, I've had, I've worked with a lot of four, type four clients, and I love working with fours. And I think fours are often misunderstood exactly because they can focus a little bit on what's missing, focus on what they're lacking, feel a sense of inner deficiency. And the funny thing about fours is that what's in their shadow is actually what's great about them, you know, and their path is really about allowing themselves to be happier. Uh, but once I, once I found the subtype level, I was able to work with my fours in an even deeper, better way, because I was able to see that different fours need different things. So my self-preservation four clients are kind of holding their feelings in and trying not to be a burden on the people around them and putting on a happy face, even that's, that's not the way they're feeling inside and toughing things out and proving themselves. Um, and so it helped me see that I needed to let help them see that they're already working really hard. They can share more vulnerability with others. They don't always have to put on a happy face. Um, they can lighten up on themselves and let themselves have fun. Um, for the social fours that are more caught up in suffering, um, that something totally different is needed. You know, they over-identify with diff difficult feelings and with an sense of inferiority. So for them, it's about taking action in the world and owning their positive qualities and then acting so that they can get feedback about that. And then the sexual four, again, it's something else. It's about how they externalize their sense of deficiency so can feel like the outside world isn't meeting my needs and they can be, get caught up in anger and, and getting demanding, like you need to meet my need. Um, and they can be competitive. And so sort of owning their positive qualities sort of helps them do something in a different way. And it's not, again, all, for them about taking action. It can be about allowing themselves to really feel their pain 
you know, whereas the social four is feeling their pain too much, right? So it's it's really an interesting uh, piece, and I'm so glad in the Enneagram roadmap that we ha we gave ourselves the room to talk about all aspects of the system, and especially uh, how to use. Uh, the different aspects of the system to really grow and observe yourself. Yeah, one of the things when we sat down with you is we said, take as much time as you need as we shoot this program, as we record it, to go into the depth that you feel is appropriate mm -hmm. for each of the subtypes to understand, to grow, to see the blind spots, to see the potential. And so we spent a lot of time going into each of the 27 subtypes and particularly mm -hmm. breaking them down to a lot of the fundamental levels. And, you know, you've got graphics charts, graphics, a lot of uh, study aids and helps throughout the entire program that I think is very beneficial for people. And we, we spent a lot of time and we put a lot of effort as we created this. You actually flew to our studios. We shot this together with you. I mean, we're not in yeah. the videos with you, but we shot it with you. So we made sure that we got all of that aspect in the program itself, um, which yeah. I think is a very powerful program. I'd love for you watching to invest in yourself, invest in the program and, and be a part of this experience with us. Mm -hmm. And these videos to some extent mirror the program. We started out with this video series with the history of the Enneagram. And that's one of the things that we talk about in more or Beatrice talks about in more depth is the history and some of um, the, the overview about the symbol itself, how the symbol, like you said, is sacred geometry. You mentioned that in a previous video, um, that it's sacred geometry and she breaks down the symbol of the circle and the symbol of the triangle and the symbol of the, the different um, arrow paths and just really goes into the history of it as well as what all of that means. And then we do an overview of the centers and the types and a deep dive into the 27 types or sub um, 27 subtypes. And then we enter the space of growth and Beatrice talks about um, like the growth overview of using the wings and the growth overview of using the arrow, you know, the different um, Line arrow, movements. Li li yeah, the, the movements of the, the Enneagram and how it's actually quite a dynamic system. And then takes what you learn about the growth path piece and then marries it and couples it with the 27 subtypes. And so then you get a really comprehensive experience of going through each of the subtypes and how to utilize it for growth and development. And that's just right. that's just a, like a gross overview of what you find in this program. What, Beatrice, what would you, you know, somebody watching right now, they're watching us, paint me a picture. What would you love to see somebody experience? They, they go ahead and invest in this program. They go through the, the entire thing. They start to understand it and start to apply it in their lives. What's like the, right. what's the, paint me a picture of the outcome you'd love to see for somebody. Right. Well, uh, I would love to see what what I've seen wh when other people, when I've seen different people in my life and, you know, that I've encountered as a therapist, uh, encounter the Enneagram. And that is just an enormous amount of uh, new insight, uh, an, an exciting amount of new information about themselves, first and foremost, about like a brand new window into why they do the things they do and um, what they need to do to work on to be happier but also and I think this just comes with the Enneagram a lot of insight into the people around them uh, a lot of insight into oh my gosh that's why my father does what he does or that's what why my spouse does what he does um, and a lot of new understanding and a awareness that now they have a whole, there's a lot to this, you know, that there's more where that came from. Uh, and so just a real awakening uh, to what's possible for them and how um, they can very easily in some ways gain a lot of information about themselves that's really, really actionable in their lives. And so to make whatever change they want to make, you know, new insight, new inspiration, uh, actionable information with which to face whatever challenge they might be facing, um, do whatever they might need to do to be whatever it is, be less anxious, be happier, be more fulfilled. Um, get out of the job they don't like and find something, a new career, you know, find a relationship, whatever challenge they might be facing, a lot of, uh, of a, a new window into why they might be doing what they're doing and how they can do things differently if they choose to and if they do want to do the work. Yeah. And I, I just want to highlight again, I said this in a previous video, but I want to highlight that 
you didn't just sit on your couch for years and think up a bunch of stuff mm -hmm. esoterically or theoretically. I mean, you have done a lot of theoretical work. You've pushed some of the ideas a little further on, on the work you've done. But what I love about the approach you've taken is this comes from practical helping people experience. You've been a therapist right. for years. You've coached people. You've worked with people one-on-one -on -one and even in different group dynamics. You've consulted with businesses. So you've taken a lot of these Enneagram concepts that sometimes right. seem esoteric to people, especially if they're just starting out, and you've helped people right. apply them in their lives. And then you've gotten the real world case study feedback to go, okay, how can that be calibrated better? And you've done that over right. and over and over again, which I believe right. brings a, a level of expertise, mm -hmm. thoughtfulness, and pragmatism to the entire system that if you're watching and you decide to invest in this, I think it's going to benefit you a lot. Mm -hmm. I think you're going to go through this and realize the wisdom from years of Beatrice doing this comes out in the program and comes out in the recommendations and comes out in the type descriptions. All of the stuff that has been put into this, you know, this isn't just a, 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 a several day shoot in the studio. This is a life work of Beatrice's that she's poured into this program that you're gonna get when you invest in it that I think is just incredibly powerful. Mm. So thank thanks, you for that. Thanks. And I think, that's, I think that's really part of the secret sauce of it. Mm, I would agree. Right, right, right. And I think for me, one of the things that's important to know is that I learned the Enneagram before I went to school to study psychology. Uh, so when I was studying psychology and learning all the different theories that you learn about how personality develops, you know, about human psychology, I saw the Enneagram in everything I studied. Um, and so I think it's also, um, uh, you know, one of the reasons why I wrote my first book is I wanted uh, both just people seeking growth and also therapists and coaches out there to have uh, uh, more information about the Enneagram coming from someone who has worked with a lot of people, but who also has seen, learned to see psychology through the, the lens of the Enneagram, which is in a way a grand theory that a lot of different psychologies can fit into. And I've done work where I've mapped the inner triangle of the Enneagram and the three centers to existing three-stage theories of psychological development, which I talk about in Enneagram Roadmap, as a way of bringing psychology and the Enneagram together so that we can have more insights into, again, oh, that's why I'm doing what I do. That's where yeah. it comes from in my history and my biography. And it really helps you put the pieces of the puzzle together in a new way that can really help you uh, gain a lot of new inner direction for anything you might want to do. Mm. Well, thank you for putting this together and, mm -hmm. and for being part of the program. Yeah, and thank you for being in this series of videos. And we hope that it's helped you if you are deciding or determining whether or not the Enneagram Roadmap is right for you. We hope that the series of videos has helped, um, you know, solidified your decision to invest in yourself and to invest in the Enneagram Roadmap. So we hope to see you on the other side. And thank you very much for giving us your time and attention. And we'll see you on the other side in the Enneagram Roadmap.